Hello and welcome to this demonstration of contact between a line body and a solid body. Here I am in the Design Modeler application where I've created the geometry that I'll use in this test. I've put two sketches on the XY plane. In Sketch 2 I created a circle and extruded it in both directions so that I'd get a solid cylinder. In Sketch 3 I created a line and I went to Concept and turned the resulting sketch into a line body. Here's my line body, referring to Sketch 3. And the extrusion here created the solid that you see below. I created a cross-section to use on that line body. A circular cross-section like that. There's the result. I went to View and turned on cross-section solids so that you can see what the line body cross-section would be like. You can see it's a solid cylinder and I positioned things so that there'd be a slight gap between the line body's representation of a cylinder and the solid cylinder. I took this model into Workbench Mechanical and illustrated that I can find contact between this circular line body and the solid cylinder below. Here we are in Workbench Mechanical. Here's my geometry. You can see the solid body first. There's the line body. It's not showing me what the cross section looks like. However, it does once I mesh the model. Although this line body has been meshed in a way that shows segmented sides, this is just faceting for geometry purposes and it will act like a circular cross section for the purpose of its behavior and establishing contact. I created a contact between the bodies. Happened to set it to frictional. It could have been frictionless. Now some things I did. You have to look carefully. This line body has to know what its diameter is for the purpose of establishing contact. And it acts with its surface offset into a cylindrical shape. So the tool is for contact between a line body that is a cylinder and something else. Here I offset that surface to 10 millimeters. I intentionally chose the same 10 millimeters as was used when I created this circular cross section. That is a 10 millimeter radius. And here you'll see that I've also used 10. Here's the interface treatment, add offset without ramping, and I made it a 10 millimeter offset. That was the first thing that was necessary to get this contact pair to work. The second thing is that I had to have a pinball radius here, and the pinball radius has to be bigger than the 10 millimeters below. I don't want it substantially bigger, but I need it large enough that impending contact can be detected when it's getting close to the other surface. Now I set this model up to be relatively simple, so I have no time step controls. For complex models, finding the time when contact is going to take place is difficult to do. What you might do would be to go to automatic bisection or even predict for impact to cut back on substep sizes so that contact just kisses the target without penetrating too much. Note though that predict for impact can lead to a very large number of substeps a long time to get a solution. So it's something you go to only when you need it. At any rate, this model was simple enough that I didn't need that extra control. Let's go down now and see what I did for meshing. It's the simplest sort of meshing. I just used default meshing with a relevance of zero and didn't worry about mid-side nodes. And the mesh is fine enough. I'm going to get reasonable behavior. The solid will have been meshed with mid-side nodes. And this circular line body will have been meshed without mid-side nodes. My analysis settings took just one node step and broke it into 20 substeps so that I could detect the contact partway through the deformation. I fixed both ends of the solid cylinder so it isn't going to move very much. And I fixed 
one vertex on this line body across the top. You can barely see the line body right now. If I go to show mesh, get a better sense of where the line body is, and you can see that I fixed one end of it. Then I applied a displacement to the other end. I moved it straight down, and I also prevented movement in the Z direction. That stabilizes it more so, makes it relatively easy to converge. I moved it down enough that that little gap will be closed and we will get contact. And again, I took multiple sub-steps so that I wouldn't get too much penetration when it just touches the surface. For a model this simple, this was enough to get the thing to converge. I ran my solution. There's my deformation of parts. If I look at it from this angle, you can see that it has touched the surface of the solid cylinder. Here are the stresses in the solid cylinder. You can see stress has been established by the fact that a contact has taken place. And here is bending moment rod. Now this is not the state of stresses in the rod. This just shows us that our bending moment has peaked out here. It has peaked here because of the contact that took place. If I animate the bending moment, you can see that as it starts to bend, before it touches, the highest bending moment is at the left. But then when it touches, the bending moment gets higher in the center. That really is all there is to it. If we look at this graph, showing bending moment. See a change in the curve when it touches and then the bending moment starts to rise again. If I look at the stresses in the solid body you can see that they didn't exist until the contact took place. There's my total deformation and I can animate that as well. Right here, goes down. Bending in the center is not all that obvious. I'm moving the right hand end down. It does establish contact, as you can sense from the fact that stresses were caused, and the bending moment underwent this inversion, if you like, right here. What this comes down to is that in recent versions of Workbench Mechanical, they have added the ability to detect contact between a line body, and in this example, a solid face. But you do have to set up the radius yourself and make a pinball radius that's bigger. So that's it and thank you for joining me.